This is Dick from Dalhousie University and Harvard University. I was wondering if you had any thoughts on the experience of small countries like Canada and Australia in coming out of the financial crisis relatively unscathed. And part of the um, rationale that both uh, practitioners and academics have made is that uh, credit was uh, more tightly regulated, that institutions were better regulated, and as a result, even when uh, the United States and much of Europe was facing enormous hurdles, uh, great challenges, um, you know, throughout uh, the you know 2008 and even uh, up until now, uh, these two small countries did relatively well. Is there something that larger economies, especially in Europe, can learn from the Canadian and Australian experience? And the second question is that, where does China fit into all of this? And I ask this question because China's GDP is expected to catch up with that of the US um, in less than 20 years and exceed the US uh, you know, beyond uh, 2030. Uh, is China sufficiently involved in the work that you do at the World Bank and sufficiently um, cooperating with regards to international measures that might influence individual governments and private institutions to, I guess, comply and be more uh, concerned about the pitfalls that lie ahead mm -hmm. and self-regulate themselves? Thank you. Um, certainly, uh, the experience of Canada was one that attracted attention after the crisis. And um, there has been studies of the Canadian experience uh, specifically. And uh, I think um, there are um, differing views there, as usual. One view is that the Canadian regulators knew what they were doing. Uh, they uh, managed to sort of uh, regulate and prevent uh, the, uh, their banks very well and before any of these types of uh, toxic instruments uh, ever came about, they were prevented. Uh, another view is that um, there's lack of competition in Canada, therefore there was much less of an innovation. And although Canadian um, economy did not suffer through the crisis, it, uh, for a very long time it's been suffering through lack of innovation and lack of competition and its negative implications for growth process. So probably the truth is in between somewhere and there's certainly things that can can be learned from the Canadian experience in terms of the regulation and supervision. And uh, the structure of the financial system is much uh, quite different in Canada compared to US. So certainly there is some lessons there as well. Um, in terms of uh, the, um, the, uh, the Chinese uh, financial system, I was part of a financial se sector assessment uh, mission to China two years ago. Certainly the Chinese financial system is moving uh, in its uh, reforms and becoming much more modern and advanced and uh, sort of they have privatized their uh, banks, they are uh, sort of liberalizing uh, many elements of the financial sector, and uh, they're doing it at their own pace, but uh, we know China is pretty unique in its whole development process, so uh, I think they are moving very much uh, their financial system so that their financial system can contribute to the growth process going forward, and it does not become uh, a, a feature that would hamper their growth, and they're very aware of it, and they're very focused on it. You also asked about the role of uh, China in the World Bank, and I think China plays quite an important role in the World Bank. My uh, boss, the chief economist of the World Bank, is Chinese, as you know, Justin Lin, uh, senior uh, management of uh, the bank, uh, recognizes the Chinese influence and uh, sort of uh, needs and perceptions. So. Sir. Okay, thanks. My name is Dong Jin Li. I'm from the Ohio State University, and I have a, and I have some question about uh, how to prevent 
the banks to become the systematic. Um, you just talk about make them easier to fail. There's many methods. And do you think uh, is any government in the world tried those uh, tried those methods or not? And uh, just to make them to fail is uh, if uh, or if make them to fail is going to make the situation be worse or make the financial market be worse or not? What do you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, as I tried to uh, discuss in my presentation, I think this is one of the biggest challenges because if um, uh, you really want to have a financial system uh, that has the right incentives. Now, if the exit mechanism in the financial system is broken, if the banks know that to the extent they become large and interconnected, they are going to start um, benefiting from subsidies, then the whole system breaks down. It becomes extremely difficult for regulators and supervisors to have an effective uh, system of regulation supervision. So how to do this effectively, I don't think anybody knows, particularly because after the latest uh, you know, crisis, the perception is that this is now stronger, not weaker. So uh, the, 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 the problem is how to claw it back. One, uh, one idea is, again, this whole uh, sort of shelf bankruptcy to make sure that these institutions have uh, an understanding that if they get into trouble, they're not always going to get away. There is going to be a, um, a, a bankruptcy scheme that's been discussed and stress test outside of the financial crisis that the regulators can fall back on, even if they don't follow very closely, there is at least a way that uh, is going to be uh, out there for them besides just bailing out. And this may help remove the perception that the institutions are always going to be bailed out. So I think that's a very important part uh, of the process. And there, th this is being discussed both in the United States, in the, in the European uh, Basel regime. So to, to the extent it will be applied is something that we're going to have to see. But it's an important component, I think, of trying to claw back the, uh, the, um, the whole uh, sort of too big to fail problem. 